Well, I've been selling full-time on eBay for the last three years, but it wasn't until my second year that I was able to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together to generate my first $100,000 worth of revenue. There was a real steep learning curve to work out what works best, and in this video today, I kind of wanted to fast track that learning curve for you by letting you in on the five things that I wish I knew before I started selling on eBay. The first one is that revenue is not your paycheck. So if you're looking to start selling on eBay, chances are you're coming from a background of nine to five employment. You're getting a weekly, fortnightly, monthly paycheck. That was me, I, I used to work nine to five and I had my money and I could do what I wanted with it. But when it comes to business finances, things are a whole lot different. You've got a whole lot more expenses than you normally would with a standard nine to five and you've got to kind of try to document that to get your head around it. And that was one thing that I did do right at the very beginning that I'm so thankful for. I had an Excel spreadsheet, I documented all of my income and all of my expenses and even if you guys are looking to do this as a hobby and just sell a couple of items here and there I would still heavily recommend that you guys go ahead and document it with an Excel spreadsheet. Here's an example of what I mean by the expenses side of things when it comes to business just by selling one item on eBay. So we're going to use these Nike Hyperfuse women's running shoes as an example. Let's say we pick these up in a thrift store for $20 and then we got an eBay sale of $100 and this is going to be the breakdown of how much money you would actually make from that sale. So there it is, a $100 sale price, one big tall glass of water. But then from there, eBay is always gonna take out their cut and you can always account for anything between 12 to 15% worth of selling fees. In this example, I'm gonna use 15%, which is $15 worth of a deduction. And then from there, you're gonna to have to remember that even though eBay's paid you $85 into your bank account, you have actually originally paid $20 to purchase the shoes. So the cost of goods is gonna to need to be removed from your overall profit. And in this case, $20 is a further 20% of our total sale price. But now you've got the item and you've got the money, you do need to ship the item off to the buyer. So there's gonna be a further $10 that we're gonna to have to reduce to get it into the buyer's hands. And that's gonna be a further 10% worth of a reduction. So as you can see here, we've actually lost $45 worth of our total revenue. It's now down to $55 worth of profit, which is 55% of our overall sale price. So these five numbers are really important pieces of information to be putting into your Excel spreadsheet uh, to get an understanding of how much profit you're actually making. Because even though $85 was put into your bank account, you've still got further reductions to realize that it isn't actually $85 it's more like $55. And if you do that for every single one of your sales, you're gonna get a really good understanding of exactly how much money you're making per item. And another really important point in there as well is that is pre-tax. You've obviously got to pay your taxes and that has to come out as well. Um, there are a lot of other business related expenses that don't revolve just the single item scenario that I've just showed you there. There's things like your storage tubs that you can see behind me here. These shelves as well, that was a business related expense. So everything you need to set it up, these box lights that I've got, trestle table, all of the other shelving that I use to house my inventory, these are all things that you need to be documenting into a spreadsheet. And then you can get a really good clear picture on overall, how am I going? Am I profitable? Am I making money? Is this actually worthwhile? And you'll be surprised when all of these expenses come out to how much money you actually make. All right, the next one is product is king. Now I've got a bit of a story around this. I was at a garage sale, uh, two garage sales actually, and they had very, very different scenarios play out. The first one I walked into, it was huge. There was so many items to pick from. It was actually quite overwhelming. I was sifting through everything. I thought, how good is this? This is gonna be a field day. And I ultimately realized that this man had absolutely nothing but junk. It all should have gone to the tip. There was no value in any item for me to sell onto eBay. And I actually turned around and left very, very disappointed. I went to the next garage sale and I was met with further disappointment. This guy, as I was walking up the driveway, I could see he had maybe five to 10 items and I knew that it would have been picked out and no good. But as I got a little bit closer, I realized that there was a PlayStation 3 console with a bunch of games and he was listing it up for a price that I was able to make a profit on. I ended up buying that PlayStation and I left incredibly happy. So it just goes to show that just filling up an eBay store with a bunch of crappy items doesn't mean that it's actually gonna go on to sell. And when I first started selling on eBay, I was doing exactly that. I just thought that anything purchased at a low price would sell onto eBay and I could make some form of money on. But what I realized was that I was just putting dud items into my store and I was in the storage business, filling up these tubs behind me with product that was never gonna move. So how do you work out what a good product is? Well, there's three things. One is that you're gonna to need to know how often does it sell on eBay? It's called sell-through rate. 
And it's a really important feature to get your head around, especially in the early days, because I wasn't focused on it in the early days myself, and I really cost myself. So sell-through rate just means how many items are listed versus how many items are sold. The eBay app is gonna be able to tell you that by just simply typing in to the search bar what your item that you're looking for is, and it will give you that information. Then from there, you need to work out, can you make profit on it versus the opportunity cost that you're seeing it at? Is it a $5 item in a thrift store that you're seeing sell onto eBay with a large number of sales you know, for $30 or $40? If you put it into what is called the e-profit calculator, you'll actually determine the fact that there's about a $15 profit. So you're gonna go ahead and buy it. Five makes 15 profit, and you can see that there's a lot of sell-through rate as well. Now, if you use those two features, the eBay app and the eProfit app, and you're methodical about every single item that you buy before you go ahead and list it up, you will be off to the races. You'll be selling a lot of products, and you'll be that little man at the driveway with just 10 items in his store, but can't stop selling. All right, number three is sales don't matter, build a store. Now, here's a really good example, guys. Say you've been given the keys to your first ever brick and mortar store. Let's say it's a monster store like Kmart or Walmart, something big like that. It's yours. You can do what you want with it, but it is shell empty. Now, I'm gonna give you your first item, or you're gonna find your first item, and you're gonna put it in the right-hand corner of that storefront. But it's a great location because it's right out the front. There's a window there. People can see it as they're walking by. Now, I come along, and I'm doing my groceries and you're in the complex of the, of, the, of the center and I walk past your store and I look in and I see one item for sale and you're standing at the front door. And you're like, yep, yeah, it's for sale. You can buy it if you want to buy it. And I'll, I'll, I probably won't, right? Because you've got an empty store behind you. You don't have any branding. You, you don't look like anything. You've just got one pair of shoes sitting in the corner. If you would have been in that store while I walked past and if you had been setting up more and more shelves, putting more and more product in, creating your branding, learning about what you should be buying and selling, I'm gonna walk past the second time and I'm gonna to start to see a few more items go in. And that might perk my interest. I might start to see a few things that could be something that I'd wanna go in for a look at. And then you might run a sale one day after you've, you've spent a bit more time in your store and you've built up a few more items and you're looking to try and turn over a few and you put a little banner out and it says 15% off. I might walk past from my shopping run on my third occasion and I actually might be in there and I might strike up something and make my first purchase. That is the journey of an eBay seller. There is no different to a brick and mortar store, but all too many people out there when they first start out on eBay remain at the front door with the pair of shoes on the right hand side hoping that somebody buys their first item. You have to put in so much time and effort. There, there's the journey of six to 12 months to build up your eBay store. Just be the person that sits there building the shelves in their brick and mortar store, putting the products in place that people are gonna to wanna to buy that will land success in the long run as an eBay seller. Don't be trapped by trying to get sales early. Close your eyes and try to make your first two to 500 listings. And if you can get to a thousand listings, I haven't seen too many people that aren't making sales because you're learning as you go. Don't be the guy at the front of the shop, be the guy on the shelves putting your stuff up for grabs. Number four, you're a little fish in a big pond, so be patient. Now guys, picture yourself walking in to a Grandmaster chess tournament, but you're competing today and you have never played a game of chess in your life. And you sit down for your first matchup and you're against a Grandmaster. The dude's gonna smoke you. He's gonna know exactly what to do. You're gonna be trying to learn exactly what a pawn is and what a king and queen do. What's a bishop and a knight? And he's already gonna know the strategies and the game plans to absolutely smoke you in your very first go. Now that is a perfect example of somebody as a beginner seller trying to sell with a bunch of Grandmaster stores all around them. You're coming up a lot of other eBay sellers out there. There's a lot of other impressions and page views flying to these stores. And as a newbie with a couple of products in your store, it's gonna be very hard for you to knock over the Grandmasters. So you've gotta go into a state of education and learning. And this is where it comes back to the sales don't matter, just build your store. Just get into the game of learning and understanding what actually goes on and what it takes to be an eBay seller. Reach out to these Grandmasters, ask them questions. How how do you actually get sales on eBay? These are really important things to be doing along with the building of your eBay store to get to where you wanna be. If, if you can find patience, that is gonna be one of the biggest skill sets to be able to get you to where you need to be on eBay. All too many people just run away because they don't make a sale in the early days. Just be aware, there are grandmasters out there. You need to play it cool, learn as you go, and over time, you'll become one yourself. Number five, use the tools that eBay gives you. 
Now, a really good example of this, guys, is uh, buying a bed from Ikea. This is one of those ones that you've actually got to build up yourself when you get back home, those really annoying, frustrating ones. Now, they, they do help you out though because they give you every single tool that you need to build that bed. There's a big list here that I've got which I couldn't explain, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of different pieces of equipment here. But let's say this top run of items here, they just didn't give you. And they only gave you these two runs here, that, that set of four and that set of two, right? So you've just lost, what, seven tools that you need for your toolkit to, to create this bed? What's gonna happen? You're probably not gonna build the bed correctly, are you? Or you're not even gonna get anything built because you're missing some very, very big fundamental pieces to build this IKEA bed. Well, it's the same with eBay. eBay has got a toolkit to help you be a better seller. And a lot of people, based on finances and dollars, neglect the use of any of these tools and that ultimately shoots them in the foot and they don't make sales. Two of the biggest tools that eBay provides is the best offer feature and the promoted listings feature. It's something that I document on this channel so heavily. 50% of my sales promoted listings, 50% of my sales either the send or the accept of a best offer. So yeah, I really do think that you need to be doing that as an eBay seller to have success. I just think yes, you know, while promoted listings is a further cost, uh, it's still something you need to be putting in place given the drastic number of sales that I'm seeing coming in by promoting at a small percentage of just an extra 3%. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what promoted listings are, don't stress about it, but just have the mindset that what is eBay offering? What, what, what can I use to further enhance the opportunity to sell an item? And in my opinion, whatever that is, is something you should just go ahead and do, put into effect. And both of the big ones, like I said, promoted listings and best offers. But do that, use all of the tools that eBay have got to help you out because they are actually trying to help you make a sale, whether some people think it or not. So I've been really fortunate over the last three years to be able to kind of work out all of these five things that I've discussed in this video to the point where I've been able to hire a part-time employee, Courtney. She works 20 hours a week for me, she does the listings and then she goes out and does the shipping as well. And after a couple of months of working for me, she came to me and said, do you mind if I start my own eBay business? And I said, absolutely. But not only that is, I'm also gonna help you through the process. And we made a six part video series of documenting Courtney's journey of starting eBay from scratch I've got the first episode for you guys right here. So go and check it out. We put all of the things that we spoke about in this video into practice right there. Subscribe to the channel. Look forward to seeing you over there. We'll see you soon.